This area of Flowdesk is basically where you are setting up automated emails to send out to your subscribers based on certain triggers, which is gonna save you loads of time in your email marketing and make the process really smooth and tailored for all of your subscribers as well. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Anna. I am a designer and online educator at byrosanna.co.uk. And here on YouTube, I share videos about business, freelancing, marketing, tech tutorials, and all that good stuff. So if you like that kind of content, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. So a workflow is basically made up of a set of steps that happen automatically based on a trigger or something triggering off this automation to happen. This is what the workflows area looks like in Flowdesk. And as you can see, I've got a few different workflows already set up, but I'm gonna talk you through how to actually create one yourself. But first of all, why might we use a workflow? What kind of automations are they useful for? You could be using a workflow for things like delivering a welcome sequence, an automated series of emails that gets sent to every email subscriber so that they all receive the same content no matter when they subscribed. You could also use it to create sales funnels. So again, a series of automated emails that send out specific marketing messages, leading a subscriber towards the end goal of purchasing something. And one of the most common ways to use a workflow is to deliver a freebie. So a free opt-in that you're delivering your email subscriber in exchange for them signing up. So if we go into Flowdesk and go to create a new workflow from scratch, you can also have a browse through their pre-made templates, talking you through their sales sequence template or welcome sequence or nurture sequence, all of those different things or you can click start from scratch here and give your workflow a name. I'm just going to write freebie here. So what's important to note is the very first step in a workflow will always be a trigger because this is the thing that happens which then tells Flowdesk to kick off this workflow and actually start doing the next steps. So we always need a trigger and usually that trigger is going to be when someone is added to a segment in your email list. So if we click on this, you can then choose from one of your segments in the drop down list. So what is really important before you get started creating your workflow is to make sure you've actually set up a segment that you want people to be added to when they're joining this workflow. So if you were setting up a freebie delivery email, this segment would be the name of the freebie that you're delivering, for example. So if we head into audience and then segments, you can see I've got all of these different segments set up and you can see that a lot of these are based on the freebie that the subscriber has signed up for. So my 30 Instagram reels prompts or my Trello workshop um, details or my 2020 planner. So before you get started with the workflow, always make sure that you've got a new segment set up ready to get started with this so that when you're in the workflow section, you can just scroll down and find it and choose that uh, to be your segment that then triggers off the workflow. But something to note as well as part of this is how does a subscriber actually get added to this segment? They need to be signing up to your email list using a form which is set up to add them to a segment. So yes, you can go ahead and create the workflow now and the form afterwards, but my suggestion would be to just do those steps first of all. So create the segment, then go into forms and click to create a new form. I'm not gonna show you how to do that this time, but let's say you've created a form. What you need to do is make sure that that form is set up to add anyone who puts their details in to your workflow segment. So if we click the three dots here and click change segments, you can see that this form is set up to add anyone who signs up to it to my 30 Instagram Reels prompts segment. Um, and once they are added to that segment from that form, then that will act as the trigger for this workflow. Then we can add our next step once we've added the trigger. So you've got kind of four options here. The next step could be that you send an email and that will happen straight away. Or if you want there to be a time delay in between sending an email or in between them being added to this segment and then sending them an email, you can choose a time delay here um, and you can choose any period of time. Um, it could be a certain day of the week or a certain day of the year, or you can choose 
in days, hours, or minutes um, how long you want that delay to be from when they first sign up to when they receive this first email. Now, because you're deli now in this example, I'm going to be delivering a freebie, so I really just want that to send to them straight away. So I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to choose to have an email get sent to them as the next step. The other two options are a condition. So you would add a condition if you only want the next step to happen based on something else. Um, and I'll talk you through what that means once I've added in the first step, because it's usually something that you would um, you would set up once you've added in the first email step. Um, and the last option action here is just taking an action. So maybe you want um, anyone who is added to this segment, maybe you also want to add them to another segment um, and that's all you want to do in the workflow, in which case you would click action. Um, and this will allow you to add those subscribers to a segment or you can choose to remove them from a segment as well. So maybe, if someone signs up to get your 30 Instagram Reels prompts freebie, um, once they've signed up, maybe you want them to instantly be removed from your subscribers who were on a wait list or something like that. So that's where that can come in handy as well and you can choose the segment there. Um, but as I say, usually what you will do straight away is add an email as the first step. So once you've done that, you can then choose to use an existing email. Um, this is if you would have several emails in a workflow already and you can choose to just kind of use one that you've already used or you can create a new one. Um, and you can obviously browse through Flowdesk's amazing templates that they've created for you or you can click to start from scratch or if you have been using Flowdesk and you've got some templates of your own saved, you can find them in the My Favourites area um, where you can grab these. So I'm just scrolling down to find a template that I've already created where I've already set up and designed this freebie delivery email. So I'm not going to have to go through that with you um, in this video. So it's just saying, here's your Reels prompts. Um, and then what it's doing is basically linking people to that free download. Um, I've put the link in to, and attached the file in there so that when people click download, they will automatically download the PDF that they've signed up for. So that is my email. I'm just going to click finish here. Um, and then down here, it's really important that you double check um, and edit the subject line. Um, it's really easy to miss it, I think, because it's down here. So always make sure you edit the subject line. This is what people will see in their inboxes um, once you send this email out. So you want this to be your freebie is here or something along those lines, letting people know that this is where they can download their freebie. Um, type in some preview text there um, that shows up um, and then you're done with the freebie delivery email. And if you want to, you can just press publish and that is your workflow done. You've set up a freebie delivery workflow. That's all you might want. Um, or you can add more steps to this. So again, um, what you probably would want to do um, if you were going to send another email is add a time delay first. So you can add a wait time of like three days, for example, before you send the next email so then just click email and start that process again um, and as I said you can also add conditions in as well so if we click the plus button and click condition this is where we can set um, for the next steps to only happen if something else has already happened um, so what we can do is take action if um, a subscriber is in a specific segment, a subscriber has opened the email, a subscriber has clicked a link, um, a few different options here. Most commonly, what you might want to look at doing is make it so that the next email in your sequence only gets sent to the subscriber if they've actually opened the first email. So what you do is click subscriber opened the email, you want to choose which email. Um, obviously, we've only got one at the moment, so we'll choose that one. So if they have opened the workflow email, then yes, we want to send them another email. If they haven't opened the workflow email, maybe we just want to leave it at that, or you could add an action to remove them from a segment. It's completely up to you. But as you can see, you can really build out some really detailed workflows and automations all using Flowdesk, which is amazing. 
And if you want to learn more about Flowdesk and go really in depth with email marketing as a subject as a whole, I have got an online course called Email Marketing with Flowdesk, which takes you through all of what I've just shown you, plus how to design emails, plus how to write subject lines, creating your content, all the different types of workflows and automations you create can create and loads, loads more. So loads of stuff in that online course if you do want to master Flowdesk for yourself. I hope you found this helpful and I will be back again soon with another video.